differential calculus. Let's start with some terminology. Differential calculus is the branch of math that studies the rate of change between variables, in other words, slopes. Differentiation is a process used to find rates of change between variables. And a derivative of a function is the rate of change between variables. We'll talk about other definitions of a derivative in just a second. Now, for now, we work with single variable functions, which are of the form y is equal to f of x. This implies that the dependent variable y depends on only one independent variable x. The first order or first derivative of a single variable function is denoted as one of the following, dy dx, the f of x dx, or f prime x. And each of these is read as the derivative of y or f of x with respect to x. So notice we're talking about rates of change or slopes, but instead of using that triangle delta to denote change in, we're just using the letter d. And when the derivative is evaluated at a point, say x equals a, it's written as either dy dx with a vertical line, and at the bottom it says x equals a, which tells us that we should evaluate it at x equals a, or d f of x dx, vertical line, x equals, a, x equals a, or very simply f prime of a. So let's talk about three definitions of a derivative. A derivative of a function y equals f of x is, or tells us, the rate of change between the function and any of its independent variables. And what we'll learn is that if the function is linear, then the derivative is a constant. And when the function is nonlinear, the derivative is a function itself. Then we have the mathematical definition. And we'll go through this in turn, but I'll read it out loud now. The mathematical definition of a derivative is that it's the limit of the change in y over the change in x as the change in x approaches zero. And then we have the geometric or graphical definition. The derivative of a function at a point along a curve is the slope of the line that lies tangent or just touches that point. For a linear function, again, the rate of change of y with respect to x is a constant. In other words, the rate of change does not depend on the value of x. So we already know that the slope of a line is calculated as the change in y over the change in x. And we can choose any two points to calculate the slope. So here I'm going to use some general notation. I'm going to calculate the slope between point x sub 0, which has a corresponding y value of f of x sub 0, and x, of, x sub 0 plus change in x, which has a corresponding f of x sub 0 plus change in x. So when I use that information, I know that the difference between points a and b is going to be change in x, and that the difference in the y value is change in y, which is going to equal f of x sub 0 plus change in x minus f of x sub 0. So I can plug in what I know, and I could calculate the slope as this. For example, suppose y is equal to f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Yet let's use the formula slope is equal to change in y over change in x to show that the slope is 2. So we know immediately that the slope is 2. We just want to use some algebra to prove it. So here's a solution. I know that f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. And I know that f of x plus change in x is equal to 2 times x plus change in x plus 1. So notice, I'm just evaluating the function at x and at x plus change, in f, change of x. Then. I'm going to use that information and I'm going to plug it into my slope formula. And I come up with this expression here. I have that f of x plus change in x minus f of x divided by change, in of, x, change of x. And when I do some algebra, I come up with 2 times the change in x divided by change in x, which simplifies to 2. And you can do this process for any linear function. The point is that the slope of a linear function and the derivative is going to be a constant. But where this gets interesting is with nonlinear functions. So what do we know about the slope of a nonlinear function? We know it changes. So check out this parabola here. At this point, the slope is basically vertical. As we move along the x-axis, the slope is negative, but relatively less steep. As we move further along the x-axis, the slope is still negative, 
not as steep. At the origin, the slope is zero. As we move along the x-axis, the slope is positive. This remains positive, gets a little bit more steeper, and then becomes vertical. The point to show you this graph is that for a nonlinear function, the rate of change of y with respect to x is a non-constant. The slope, in other words, changes. It depends on the value of x. Okay, so let's really think about the definition, the mathematical and geometric definition of a derivative. So I've got uh, sort of two graphs here. The graph on the left-hand side shows um, a parabola, part of a parabola in quadrant, run, quadrant one in two points, A and B. And the graph on the right-hand side is just a zoomed-in version of, uh, of A and B, of this graph that we want to really look at. So the point of showing you this is the following. We can approximate the slope at that point A by finding the slope of the secant line between points A and B, i.e. between x is equal to x sub 0 and x is equal to x sub 0 plus the change in x. And I've written out the slope formula here. So you've done this before. You've done this in labs. You've done this on quizzes where you've had to calculate the slope of a nonlinear curve by calculating the slope of a line between two points. So this is nothing new. This is what's new. The closer is B to A, the better the approximation of the slope at point A. This means that we should let the change in x approach zero. And we write that down as change in x arrow zero. That just means that let change in x approach zero or approximately equal zero. So, you, so let's take a look at the graph on the right hand side, the zoomed in version. So right now the change in x is pretty large, right? And the, what we're doing is we're approximating the slope at A by calculating the slope of the secant line between points A and B. But what we want to do is get these points closer together. So notice change in x has gotten smaller and it's gotten smaller again. And you can imagine making that change in x really, really, really tiny until eventually A and B just collapse on each other. So eventually as that change in x equals zero, approximately equals zero, A and B are on top of each other and the secant line becomes what's called a tangent line. A tangent line is just a line that touches that point at A, or touches the curve at A. So mathematically speaking, letting the change in x approach zero just means taking the limit of the slope of the secant line. So here we have the slope formula, something that you've been working with for weeks. We're going to introduce a little bit of limit notation. We're just going to say we're going to take the limit of these guys as the change in x equals zero, or approaches zero. One way to think about it is that we're going to let the change in x approximately equal zero. And when we do that, when we take the limit of the slope of a secant line, by letting change in x approach zero, we have the derivative. So this is just the mathematical definition of what a derivative is. So this derivative, dy dx, or f prime x, however it's written, is the slope of the line tangent to some value of x. So for example, the derivative at this point, at x equals 0, is the slope of this straight tangent line at x equals 0. The derivative at x2 is the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. The derivative at x equals 4 is the slope of the tangent line at x equals 4. The point is that the derivative, i.e. the slope, this rate of change, is a function of x. And what you're going to learn later on is that instead of drawing an army of tangent lines, we can use the rules of derivatives to find a simple function for the derivative. But we'll get to that in the next topic. So let's go through this conceptually. For example, suppose we're asked to find the derivative of y uh, equals x squared using the derivative definition, the mathematical definition, which is just finding some formula for the slope and then letting that change in x basically equal zero. So what do we do? How do we think about this? Here's the first step. We know that we can approximate the slope at any value of x by finding the slope of the secant line between x and some x plus change in x. So you can think of it as, as the slope of the secant line between a and b. So here's what I know. I know that f of x is equal to x squared. And I know that f of x plus change in x is equal to x plus change in x squared. I'm just evaluating the function at x and x plus change of x. 
So I have this information and I can just plug it into my slope formula. So my change in y is going to end up being my x plus change in x squared minus x squared. And when I do some algebra, I expand this out and then I simplify things, I get that the slope is equal to 2x plus change in x. So the slope depends on what value of x we're at and how big change of x is. Great. So now we can take the limit of the slope by letting the change in x approximately equal zero. When we do that, we come up with the derivative. So when we let the change in x approximately equal zero of this function, we just get 2x. So I've just found out using limits, using the definition of a slope, that the derivative of x squared is equal to 2x. What can I do with that? Well, now I can evaluate this derivative at any value of x to find the slope at that point. Let's look at this graphically. So here's a graph of y equals f of x equals x squared. And we've calculated the slope at any point to be 2x, or the derivative at any point to be 2 times x. So for example, the slope at x equals negative 2 is f prime of negative 2. So I'm evaluating that derivative at negative 2. And I come out with negative 4. The slope at 2, x equals 2, is f prime of 2. I'm evaluating the derivative at 2, which equals 4. We can even graph the derivative if we wanted to. And when we do that, we get the same exact answer. I have some function for the derivative, dy dx equals f prime x equals 2x. I can graph this out. I can say, OK, well, when x equals negative 2, the derivative is negative 4. And when x equals 2, the derivative is a positive 4. Quiz yourself. Let y equal f of x equals 3x squared plus 1. Graph this function in quadrant 1, the positive quadrant, for x in 0 and 3. Then use the slope formula to show that the slope is equal to 6x plus 3 times the change in x. Then we're going to approximate the slope at x equals 1. We're going to approximate it by calculating the slope using our formula when x equals 1 and the change in x equals 0.5. We're going to show this on our graph. Then we're going to use the derivative formula to define the derivative of this function and then get a better value for the, a more specific value for the derivative at x equals 1. So pause the video and try this on your own. So the first thing that we're asked to do is to graph this function in quadrant 1 for just a small range of x, for x between 0 and 3. So I know that this is a, a quadratic formula. And it's going to be upward sloping. When I graph it out, it looks something just like this, with a vertical intercept of 1. Second question asks us to use that slope formula to show that the slope is 6x plus 3 times the change in x. So you know what I'm trying to get to. So my first step is to define f of x and to define f of x plus change in x. And this is what I come up with. So I'm going to plug in what I know into the slope formula. And after doing some algebra, a little expanding and simplifying, I get 6x plus 3 times the change in x, which is what I was supposed to get. So the third question says, what is the slope between x equals 1 and the change in x equals 0.5? Or I'm sorry, what is the slope when x equals 1 and change in x equals 0.5? So in other words, what's the slope between x equals 1 and 1 1.5? So I'm just going to plug this information into my formula and I come up with 7.5. And we're supposed to show this on the graph. So what are we doing on the graph? What we're doing is we're calculating the slope of the secant line between the values of x equals 1 and x equals 1.5. When I do that, my change in y over change in x is going to be 3.75 over 0.5, which comes out to 7.5. It's exactly what I anticipated. The fourth question says, what is dy dx of this function? Evaluate it at x equals 1. So now I need to go a step further. I'm not interested in what the slope is between 1 and 1 1.5, or between 1 and 1.1. 1 .1. I'm interested at the, of the slope at x equals 1. So I need to take the derivative. I need to find the derivative. And to find the derivative of this function, I need to take the limit of the slope 
as the change in x approaches zero. In other words, let the change in x approximately equal zero. And we come up with 6x. So the derivative of 3x squared plus 1 is equal to 6x. And when I evaluate it at 1, I come up with a more precise slope, or rate of change at x equals 1, and that rate of change is equal to a positive 6.